So it's 1909. Some of the brightest minds across the world have been baffled for a hundred years by an African alphabet they can't decipher. It's the world's most mysterious writing system and happens to be older than most writing systems indigenous to Europe. We're talking centuries before German Gauls were writing in runic symbols or even before Anglo-Saxons adapted the Latin alphabet to write English. This particular African civilization had condensed their language into a 23-letter alphabet. And no, I'm not talking about the ancient Egyptians. So then, who were these amazing and mysterious Africans? Well, first you have to do me a special favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Why? Because the like button helps the algorithm get this information out to more people and the subscribe button helps keep you notified of future videos. Right, no more time wasting, time for the reveal. Say hello ladies and gentlemen, bros and broettes to the kingdom of Kush, otherwise known as the kingdom of Meroe. In 300 BC, the Kushites had been there, done that, and got the t-shirt. I mean, really done it all. First off, their ancestors had established the Egyptians' civilization. Don't believe me. Believe the ancient Greek historian Diodorus Siculus, who wrote that the Egyptians were reputed to be, quote, colonists sent out by the Ethiopians, end quote. In fact, several times when the Egyptian nation and body politic found itself in dire straits, she often called on none other than her brothers in the south, the Cushitic peoples, for help. The last time of which was the 25th dynasty when Egypt was threatened by the Assyrian Empire. This 25th dynasty was started by the Nubian king Pianki in about 740 BC. Under him and his successors, Egypt saw its last flourish in the sun as a force to be reckoned with. Egyptian art, architecture, religion and culture enjoyed a massive revival, as you would expect. What do I mean when I say, as you would expect? Well, again, as we discussed in a previous video, links in the description, even the founding fathers of Egyptology confessed ad nauseum that Egyptian culture was African culture proper originating from blacks deeper within Africa. So the Nubian 25th dynasty was the Egyptian story turning full circle and the blacks of Meroe by reviving Egyptian culture one last time were essentially reminding the Egyptians who they really were as a people after years of abuse and neglect of their culture by their newcomer overlords, the lighter skinned Assyrians. But it wasn't until much later, long after the 25th dynasty, when the Nubians had eventually been beaten out of Egypt by the Assyrians and the Greeks were now in power in Egypt, that something called the Meroitic script emerged, named after the capital of Kush in Meroe. Invented by scribes and priests, the Meroitic script was divided into two types. First, there was the day-to-day -day hieratic script, which was a cursive, informal, alphabet-based script. Then there was the hieroglyphic script, symbol heavy and pictographic in nature, used mainly for religious rituals and inscriptions on tombs of the rich and powerful. Now the Meroitic script was obviously heavily influenced by Egyptian hieroglyphics, with the earliest inscriptions we can find dating to around 300 BC. But just because it came after the Egyptian hieroglyphic system doesn't make it inferior. In fact, in a few ways, historians have appraised the Meroitic script as being more advanced. How so? Well, listen to this from archaeologist and professor Christoph Grzymski. Quote, The people of Meroe reduced the multitude of hieroglyphic signs to 23 basic signs, an alphabet. Unlike the Egyptian system, this alphabet also included vowel sounds, a great improvement over the hieroglyphic system. End quote. But the innovations of the people of Meroe didn't end there. See, you might take it for granted that we have spaces between words to make reading a sentence in English easier. But that wasn't always a common feature of ancient scripts. Not unless you were the Meroites, who according to Dr. Grzymski, developed, quote, a sign marking the division of words, an uncommon feature in ancient writing, close quote. So in 1819, when this black African script first became known to Europe, apart from the massive embarrassed sigh of surprise that could be heard all the way in Timbuktu, 
or maybe we could say Sudan, there was an almighty attempt to diminish the significance of this script. For the next hundred years and more, it was believed that the people of Meroe could not have developed this script without the help of the Greek settlers up in Egypt. Without any concrete evidence, it was claimed the Greeks had taught the people of Meroe how to infuse vowel signs into their alphabet and even condense their hieroglyphs down to a compact 23 symbols. The problem is, till today, there is no concrete evidence of such a transfer of knowledge. According to a paper by Claude Riley, this was quote, proven wrong because it is possible to follow the development of the Meroitic writing system from the Napatan transcriptions step by step. The Meroites created a purely phonetic writing system which fundamentally differs from that of the Egyptians, end quote. Now don't get me wrong, the people of Meroe might well have been influenced by the Greeks, but the fact remains that without any concrete archaeological or textual evidence, European experts just assumed this assertion as fact. So on the one hand we can conclude based on nothing really but guesswork that blacks were influenced by whites way back when, but you aren't allowed to read Herodotus and many other ancient sources calling the native Egyptians black and conclude that Yes, the ancient Egyptians sharing the same landmass as other Africans must have been mostly black. I mean, the gaslighting is stunning. But anyway, for all that expert assumption, the Meroitic script remained a complete mystery until this guy came along. His name, Francis Llewellyn Griffith. Griffith was a mathematician who took an interest in Egyptology later in his life and in doing this found himself fascinated by the Meroitic mystery. In 1909, he finally did it. The details of how are for another time. But what is amazing is this. See, you can decipher an alphabet or a script, but if you don't know what the words you've deciphered mean, then what have you really got? Just another friggin' headache. And that's the problem. As Christoph Grzymski puts it, Quote, the number of loan words from ancient Egyptian recognizable in Meroitic was quite small, as was the number of Meroitic words surviving in Nubian, a language still spoken in the Middle Nile Valley. End quote. The result of this is that according to the online Encyclopedia Britannica, quote, although some scholars believe the language to be related to Nilo-Saharan languages, Nothing is known for certain about the relation of Meroitic to other languages." End quote. And here's where someone somewhere watching this just might be the answer to this riddle. Guys, languages very rarely completely die out. They tend to carry over, however minutely, into other languages, even long after the people who spoke that language have mixed with other cultures and peoples. Now Africa is huge. You could fit the whole of the USA, China, India and all of Europe into it and still have room left over. The continent is reportedly the most genetically diverse continent on the planet. In one African country alone, there can be 30 different languages and tribes. Don't you think there might be just one tribe in the region of Africa today that once belonged to the kingdom of Meroe whose language, if we alphabetize it and script it, might offer clues, a word here, a sound there, that could shed light on the mystery of the Meroitic language? I mean, in that area of Africa alone, the Sudan, you could fit about three quarters of Europe. Three quarters. So we have the script, but what did the language actually mean? I don't know guys, it's like Professor Grzymski said, quote, what is needed, of course, is another Rosetta Stone, the bilingual tablet in three scripts found in Egypt, which enabled scholars to match a known language, Greek, with the undecipherable hieroglyphics of Egypt. End quote. Question is, is there still a Champollion out there who can solve the mystery of the Meroitic script? And this time round, could the Champollions of today actually look like the people who invented the script they're decoding? It's not impossible. Falu Ungom did something slightly similar when he rediscovered the almost forgotten script of Ajami. Click here to hear his story and to find out just how he did it. Anyway, till we have an answer, we're repping black right. No doubt. See you in the next one, guys.